<sighs> that was close. It certainly felt close. It's a bit foolish of me to be out here. You know, a classic mistake. You think it's you think it's far away and it just sneaks up on you lightning. You can kill a person from ten miles away. And that is a lot closer than ten miles. If you guys look up here. That dark cloud right there is where that big bolt of lightning came from. It's very, very, very close. Good grief. My hands are just shaking. trying to stay as low as possible. No, I'm not hiding under these trees. I just, I got away from the water. I'm not quite really under these trees. I'm just trying to stay as low as possible. Really what you want to do in the event of getting caught in the middle of a lightning storm, obviously stay away from water, stay away from tall objects, be in a relatively open space and you just want to curl up into a ball, get as low to the ground as you can. Goodness, well, that was too close. Well, obviously, we can't go out there and go fishing right now, so instead, I'll just show you guys what I like to use when I go fishing. So for rods and reels, I'm just gonna start by showing you guys what I work with from the bottom up in terms of the size of the fish I'm after. So I have an Ugly Stick GX2. I think it's like a five foot 10 length rod. You know, I'm five foot seven. This thing is just maybe a few inches higher than me, so. Pretty short, which I like. It's good for creeping around through the brush, um, you know, underhand pitching it to a really close quarter fish. Eight pound line on here. Uh, the reel is a Pen Fierce 2, and it is the uh, 2000 size. Really consistent drag on it. The drag is kind of set high right now, which is why, if you see me lower the drag, there you go. Really smooth drag. I've never had any issues with this reel or rod whatsoever. Uh, it's not the most sensitive rod, don't get me wrong. I mean, I wouldn't recommend fishing for anything where you need to feel incredibly sensitive bites while working in artificial. Uh, but if you've got a bait in the water and you're carp fishing, which is what I like to use this for, you know, I've always got a hand on the line or an indicator on the line like a bobbin. So the rod may not be super sensitive for working, you know, small baits, but uh, it does its job. It's, it's a pretty good rig. So let's move up the chain of command here. This might be my favorite one that I own. This is a Shimano Stratic. I think it's a 2500 size reel on a St. Croix Mojo Bass Rod. Yeah, this is a really fantastic combination. It is very light. It is very well balanced. Uh, this thing has 20 pound braid on it, which may be a little bit heavy, but I do catch a lot of redfish on these. A lot of, um, you know, speckled trout, which, you know, can be sizable and they're good fighters. Those uh, saltwater fish fight harder than those freshwater fish. They just do. Uh, it has never failed me. It is a fantastic, fantastic rod and reel. Uh, probably about mid-range for price. You know, I probably paid something like 200 bucks for the for the reel and maybe 150 for the rod, maybe 140. So really nice pairing. I love this a lot. It's great for fishing for uh, predators, particularly bass, redfish, trout, flounder. You know, all the good stuff that we want to catch. I love this setup. I, you know, I think the biggest fish I've ever caught on this, I'm trying to remember what it was. Honestly, can't remember, but I've caught fish up to 10, maybe 15 pounds on this thing, you know, with relative ease. Fantastic. One of my absolute favorites. The most recent addition to the family is this Lose MB Tournament Speed Spool Bait Casting Reel, which is just phenomenal. Uh, this thing casts a mile. It has got just incredible, um, I haven't even toyed with it really yet because I haven't had to, but the, the brake setting features for the casting control, 
It's incredible. The gear ratio on this is like, I think it's a seven to five to one. So something like 30, 31 inches of line on every turn on the retrieve. Really, really, really nice reel. And this rod that it's on, I actually don't know if you can still get these online. I've looked since then. I don't think they have them online anymore, but uh, this is the Fishing Tackle Unlimited Travel Peacock Bass Medium Heavy Casting Rod. So this thing right here, let me take my lure off. We'll talk about these in a second. Get out of here, buddy. Kids, do not do what I'm about to do at home. Don't use your teeth. Really cool thing about this setup right here is that uh, let's wind in our line. I'm gonna take out that light bulb before this is over. Believe you me. So take off the reel. The rod is fantastic for uh, the angler on the move, the traveling angler. Don't like paying 200 plus dollars for your plane tickets anymore because you're trying to pack that, you know, over 50 inches uh, package. Get yourself one of these three piece rods. Really fantastic. I mean, look at this. It's like two, two and a half feet long. And this thing is incredible. Comes in this really cool uh, travel tube right here. And you can fit this on your like overhead compartment if you're flying with it. I haven't done that yet. Uh, but that was the inspiration for buying this. I went to Wisconsin a number of years ago and uh, paid a fortune to pack a fishing rod. I didn't catch a thing. But anyway, this is fantastic. Like I said, I don't think you can get these online anymore at the Fishing Tackle Unlimited website. At least I haven't been able to find it. Fishing Tackle Unlimited does not have the most well-organized website to begin with. But uh, I know the one here in Houston, at least the one off of 59, last time I was there they had a number of these still in stock. So I'd highly recommend you go pick yourself up one. This is the medium heavy version. And although it is called the Peacock Rod, a Peacock Bass Rod rather, I know of at least one reliable account because it was in, a, I think it was in Saltwater Magazine or like Texas Fishing Monthly or one of those magazines where a, a really seasoned guide and a really seasoned traveling uh, like fisherman you know, slash author. So somebody who knew what he was doing was able to use one of these on a boat, which makes a difference. So I'm, I'm prefacing here, but he was able to use one of these and I think a Shimano Calcutta paired with it uh, to land a 90 pound sailfish. Now that was the exception to the rule and the circumstances were perfect and he was an expert. However, this bad boy is up to some incredible challenges and it has yet to disappoint me. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, my carp fishing rod, the one that is actually a carp fishing rod, actually had to order this from a company, I think in Arizona. I cannot remember the name of the website. I'll link it in the description of the video. But anyway, this is a Fox International 10 foot carp rod. Uh, this is one half, this is the other one. So it's a 10 foot two piece rod. And this has a three pound test curve to it. And that is, if you're a carp fisherman, you already know all this, but if you're looking to get into carp fishing, I would, I would recommend you start a little bit lower in that. Um, if you look at carp rods, you'll see this this recurring measurement, test curve. Uh, what does that mean? It means how much pressure it takes to bend the rod down to a 90 degree angle. This is a three pound test curve rod and that is a little bit heavier than most people need for most carp. Uh, the reason I got the three pound test curve is because I wanted a shorter rod. This is a 10 footer. Most carp rods are something like 12 to 14 feet in length. And I just knew I wasn't gonna be able to maneuver that in some of this like close quarter brush that I fish in. I wanted the 10 foot rod so I got a little bit of a heavier rod. Anyway, it works out for me. Put this aside, this rod is absolutely fantastic. It is very thin, uh, but it's just really well built, well put together. And on this rod, I've got a Shimano OC bait runner reel. I think bait runners are essential when you're fishing for big carp. And this reel, the line is tangled all over it, but uh, this reel is just phenomenal. Um, when I first got it, there was a little bit of an issue with the line not spooling evenly. And I know some people have had that issue before, but basically I just took the reel apart, added in, uh, it was missing a washer. So I actually flattened out some wire and in, embedded the wire where the washer should have gone. And that made the, the line lay much more even. Haven't had problems with it since. This thing casts a mile, both the rod and the reel together. This casts a mile, this casts a mile together. They cast two miles. Now these next ones I've brought out because I use the same reel for each of them interchangeably. Uh, the first one, which if you look at my video, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it has the big parasite in the title where I found the fish that had the, the louse or 
what is it? It was a tongue louse that was on the fish. This is what I was using. So this is my surf casting rod. It is 10 feet long. I think it is a medium heavy action. I can't remember. 20 to 50 pound braided line, one to five ounce lure, 10 feet in length. It is a fantastic rod. It is made by Penn. And I have caught some fantastic fish on this thing. By the way, I'm dripping with sweat because it's so humid. It's been raining off and on all day, but like rain with the sunshine, which I think in Georgia is referred to as either a sun shower or they say the devil is beating his wife. I don't know why they call it either of those. But anyway, fantastic rod. Uh, this is the Pen Prevail, Pen Prevail series rod. Some people complain about the rod rings with some of the pen surf casting rods. I have never had an issue with it ever. I've only had one, and I don't have these rods anymore, but I've only had one. It was the Pen Fierce rod. Um, and I had it for like three years and then the tip, the, uh, the lining, the ceramic lining of the tip came out and I just replaced the tip of the rod. This one I've never had any issues with. You'll notice there's a little bit of tape on here. That's because I like to put bells on my reel when I'm surf fishing so I can hear the bell. It's not because the rod is broken. But anyway, fantastic. And the other one that I brought out, I brought out because I use this reel with that and this. So the reel is the Pen Spinfisher V uh, 7500 long cast. It's a mouthful. But this thing is a phenomenal reel. It's a workhorse. It is tough as nails. It's got fantastic seals in it. I've never had any issues with this thing sticking or hanging up. I do take good care of my stuff. I wash it off after, you know, every trip to the ocean. You know, I, I, I'm not the best at reel maintenance, but, you know, I'm decent and I do look after my gear. So this reel has lasted me a very, very long time. Uh, it's got a nice little back wind on it, which when you're fighting a big fish or trolling or, you know, just there's a dozen reasons why you can use a good back wind. Never underestimate the need for a good back wind switch on your reel. But anyway, it holds something like 300 yards of 65 pound braid. I've got mostly 65 pound braid on here. And then I think I've got like 100 yards top shot with this 80 pound braid, mostly because I had a ton of 80 pound braid, didn't know what to do with it. And I didn't want to waste it. You know, I don't like to get crazy and buy all these different brands. You know, I might be a bit simplistic in this respect, but I would just like to buy what works. And certain brands work for me very well, so I just kind of stick to them. I do venture out, I do experiment, but Pen has proven itself to me over and over and over. Put this aside. This rod is very short. I think it's like five foot, 10 inches long. It is extremely strong. I have caught very, very, very large, strong fish on this, including if you look at the one if you look at the one video I did where I said, oh, hook in the hand. If you look at our one video where we caught the uh, alligator gar on a bass lure, where I took some 100 pound wire and rigged it through a bass lure with some big game hooks, I ended up catching a, a alligator gar that was something like 40 pounds with a lure. It was really fun. Um, I used this rod and to, honestly, that fish felt overmatched to me. I felt like I was overgunned for the size of that fish. This is, a really fantastic rod. I think you could probably take this, um, you know, jigging offshore and, and catch a respectable fish. You're not going to catch a, you know, 400 pound grouper. The grouper is going to snap this in half. But, you know, wahoo, you know, mahi mahi, stuff like that, you, you could probably handle it with one of these. I know you can handle some, you know, decent sized sharks with it because I've done it before. So, great rod. Highly recommend it. So now we're getting into some of my bigger toys. So I've got. These, by the way, are rigged up, so I don't normally have these on here, but I'm planning a shark fishing trip soon. And this is maybe the best reel purchase I ever made. Maybe the best reel ever designed. And I don't say that lightly. I really do think the Penn Senator might just be the best reel ever designed. And this one is, I think, the um, yeah 113 HL Penn Senator. That's what this is. And I've got this thing loaded up with 50 pound braid with about 100 yards of 80 pound braid on top of that. And then this is my uh, shark leader that I've got coiled up here and a uh, filed wide gaped hook on the end by Mustad. Now I'll, I'll, I'll do a whole nother video on how to make shark leaders later. But anyway, this is a fantastic setup. Caught many, many sharks with this. Many, many very large red drum. Very, very hard to beat this. I love this thing. However, I didn't say it was impossible to beat it. I said it was hard to beat it. And if anyone's gonna beat it, it's gonna be this one. It's my pride and joy right here. This is an Avid HXW. This is just 
this is the Swiss watch of my collection. And yes, I know Avit is not the most expensive brand of reel out there. You know, it's not like it's a Stella or anything like that. However, this is just a phenomenal, phenomenal reel. Incredibly strong. Uh, it's a lever drag, which for those of you who are not experienced um, at fishing, a lever drag is basically, if you imagine your star drag, you wind it one way or the other way to tighten it. A lever drag is exactly what it sounds like. So this is what controls your drag when you're fighting the fish. And to be honest, it is much easier and quicker to use, and therefore it makes fighting large fish much more efficient. So you can control how much drag setting you have with just the flick of a, the flick of a finger. And I think this reel has up to something like 30 pounds of drag. Now, here's the deal. Let me show you something. This reel right here has 13 some odd pounds of drag, maybe 14 pounds of drag. The uh, Shimano Stratic that I showed you is billed to have 20 pounds of drag. This is billed to have 30 pounds of drag. Now, I have never, and I've caught some big fish, I have never had to use more than 20 pounds of drag, ever, for any fish. I've never had to use 30 pounds of drag. And the reason for that is too much drag versus too much pressure equals a broken line or a broken rod. So the key is not how much drag power does your rod or reel have, sorry, not your rod, how much drag power does your reel have, it's how much sustainable drag power does your reel have. This might have, you know, a reel might have 20, 30 pounds of drag power, but can it sustain it for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes? That's the biggest difference between the quality of a reel like this one and some of the other, you know, these are all good quality rods and reels. But uh, the, the key to this is not just that it has more drag power, but it has more sustainable drag. I can fight a fish at a higher drag setting longer than I can with these other reels. And that's what makes it so valuable. Uh, it's made in America, which, you know, it is a good thing. So it's American made. It is all aluminum. This thing is just amazing. Best feature about this reel, if I was going to sell you on this reel, what I would sell you on is the, uh, the mechanism by which it attaches back here to your rod you can remove the reel uh, without having to unspool the line. So if you look at a lot of these rods and reels, the, you have to put a screwdriver down through this side to unwind it to get this, um, this rod clamp off. And that means if there's line on your reel, you can't get to it. You gotta unspool all the line if you ever wanna switch the rod from, or switch the reel from rod to rod. With the Avits, you actually go by way from the back. So I can leave all this line on here and switch it around, which is, it sounds like a small thing, but it's not. And those of you who are experienced at fishing with big tackle, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, when you want to switch out a reel to rod to rod, uh, that is just so nice. But anyway, I've got a 100 pound braid on this. Uh, this is one of my shark rods that I like to use. And this right here, this is one of the best purchases I ever made right here. This is the Penn Senator rod. And it is, I think, a 50 to 80 pound class rod and it is worth every penny. It truly is a 50, 80 pound class rod. It has a gorgeous metal reel seat. Aluminum reel seats are overkill for most rods unless you are going after truly big fish, uh, pelagic species like sharks. Um, I would highly recommend you have a rod with an aluminum reel seat, and that one does. So that, that is my rod and reel collection. I have a couple of other rods. Uh, some of them I use interchangeably with these reels. Uh, one of them is actually missing a reel right now, so I actually have to go and purchase another reel. But currently, this is what I'm working with. So let me show you some of my terminal tackle. So for fishing line, uh, for big tackle, I like to use Suffix. This is the 100-pound monofilament I like to use as top shot for shark fishing. Uh, this is Trilene, Berkeley Trilene Big Game Line. Uh, if you are on a budget, I highly recommend you use this stuff. This is 80 pound monofilament. I've had this one forever. You can see I'm running low on it. This stuff is incredibly abrasion resistant. It is just value for money right here. Value for money. I highly recommend it. Berkeley Trilene Big Game Line. So let's put this aside. For the little stuff, I do use... I just throw stuff everywhere. I do use... Berkeley Trilene line for the smaller sized reels too. This is 12 pound line that I'll put on a bait casting reel from time to time. I'm also a big fan of uh, Field and Stream. The line from Field and Stream, this is 17 pound line. This is what I currently have on my carp rod. 
which yes, 17 pound line is a little bit heavy for carp fishing, but I also catch uh, a good number of catfish on that. So anyway, uh, field and stream, I find their line to be incredibly supple, very smooth, um, not quite as abrasion resistant as some of these other, other brands, but it is much more flexible and it is much more sensitive. So better for carp fishing. Big fan of this stuff right here. You can get this in you know, most stores. Uh, as far as braid is concerned, I'm mostly a Power Pro guy, although I will use Suffix. Suffix and Power Pro are my go-to braids. Um, I mean, there's a reason that they're at the top of the market. They are just proven. A lot of people swear by like spider wire and stuff like that. I've never used it, so I cannot say. I know a lot of people who say it is just, just as good as this stuff. Uh, but Power Pro and Suffix work for me. So one thing to keep in mind is that the uh, Power Pro I feel is it's a little bit thinner than the Suffix. The Suffix is also a little bit more resistant to abrasion. So if you're going for line capacity, definitely go with Power Pro. You can hold a little bit more on there. Um, if you have a 300 yard spool of Power Pro and a 300 yard spool of Suffix line uh, and it's equal in you know line diameter, I feel like you're going to be able to fit more of that onto your reel if you're using Power Pro. However, the suffix line lasts longer. This will fray before that suffix does, in my opinion. So that's what I use for braid. Now to actually carry all this stuff around, let me show you what I like to use. I have not a fishing tackle bag, which I find to be incredibly impractical, ironically. Good old fashioned backpack. This is I don't even know what brand this is. I got this at Academy. It's like a military style backpack. Let's see right here. Drago gear. Yeah, Drago. Um, you know, it works. So we use it. Anyway, always keep a towel with you. So I do love my towel. Get that fish slime off your hands. Or if you get rained on and your towel is clean, you can dry off like that. I like this particular backpack because it's not overwhelming, but it's got a good number of pockets on it. And I am a pocket freak. So once my backpack is being organized with all my stuff, the way I like to sort things inside is by handy dandy crayon boxes. Now they make all kinds of boxes for your lures, you know, they categorize your lures, there's the unrolling lure bags. To me, nothing beats simplicity. I love crayon boxes inside my crayon box. For example, if I was going to pull out my, uh, my BB shots, what have I got them in? Lip balm case. So you get a little lip balm case here. Got my BB shots right there. Just ooh, ninja. Super simple. You know, I also like to keep, I like to keep containers in containers. It's kind of like the Russian doll method of fishing. So like I've got, for example, my larger SSG shot in a bag, in a box, in a bag. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of collecting kind of like vintage stuff that I find. Uh, for example, this, I just found this a long time ago. Um, when I was working for the Houston Zoo, I found this in an old file cabinet. This was probably from the 90s. It's an old Camel cigarette case, and I didn't realize until maybe like two days ago that there's probably like all kinds of like traces of carcinogens on this thing that it probably soaked into my hands by now, which is just lovely. But anyway, I like to use this type of container for all my swivel packages. So I don't like to pour out my swivels. I like to keep them contained separately in their packages. And then I like to keep their packages contained separately in a container like this. You know, this one, it's getting old, so the, the little clip in the lid doesn't keep it as closed as tightly as I like. So I just like to put some rubber bands over that and we're good to go. You know, this is kind of what I call my terminal tackle box. So I've got, you know, my weights or swivels. I've got extra pair of scissors. And by the way, I prefer the medical scissors because they cut through line with the serrated edges much better. You know, I've got... Uh, I don't even remember what's in this. I think this was a case for headphones. Maybe it came with like an iPod. What do I have in here? Oh, I've got like my beads in here. So like some spare swivels, some spare beads for like making leaders with and stuff like that. Just got that stored away in here. Put that over to the side. I've got all kinds of glue and epoxy that I keep in here. So for like for rod repair, um, or if I'm shark fishing, I'll put some of this fast dry super glue on the line. I've got a Swiss Army knife, which is super handy because it's got some of the tools essential for like an emergency reel repair, like the screwdrivers. And then this is also kind of my catch-all box. So for example, if I'm fishing and I like switch lures and I'm like, oh man, I don't want to get out the lure bag and go through all the proper categorizations to put this lure, I'll just throw it in this one right here. So there's a couple of like little soft plastics floating around. Um, this treble that I've got rigged up for, for snagging, if you saw the one episode where I caught the uh, Plicostomus catfish, 
Um, I you did it with this hook right here, so I keep this in here in case I ever rarely but ever feel like I want to snag a fish. You know, pens, which you never know when you're going to need a pen. If you decide, for example, one day you want to keep that, you know, that red drum that's over the slot limit and you have your, your tag, use your pen. A pair of tweezers, which comes in handy more than you think, especially if you're outdoors and you want to pull a splinter or a thorn out of your hand. Little tiny odds and ends like that kind of go in here. Then I've got my lure boxes, and I have two of them. This one, the smaller one, is what I use for using like my swim baits and stuff like this. So like these right here. By the way, most of my baits have these little hook guards on them. So you see I've got a big pile of lures right here, but I can pull out individual lures without them getting hooked up and tangled on everything else because they have these little hook guards on them. You have to be super careful though because this, this guy right here, once I was like, oh, I'm just going to pull the hook guard off, ended up skewering my hand. I ended up getting myself a pretty serious cut because it just cut right through the edge of my hand. But anyway, very carefully remove these when you decide to do so. So some of my swim baits mimic mullets, little rattles inside. Uh, this one actually, as far as the pattern is concerned, this one looks exactly like a small bass. You know, I love spinner baits. I'm a huge fan of spinner baits and spoons. Anything that's got a bit of a, there we go, bit of a flash to it. There's another one of the classic golden spoons for redfish. Sometimes I will play around and make my own baits. So, for example, if I was ever casting out to, you know, like jacks on top of the water, I've rigged this right here. Two spoons together, um, rigged with some very, very strong shark fishing wire. Just hooks in the center, big game treble at the bottom with some string that I've tied in myself. I don't even know if this works, but there's no reason it shouldn't. So I like to play around with things, keep that in here. You know, big jigging spoons. Like this one right here, if I ever, you know, get the opportunity to go jigging off a boat. Soft plastics, most of which I actually keep in a separate bag, I'll show you. But yeah, I'm a big fan of the simple things. Topwaters, diving plugs, and spoons. You can't go wrong with these. These are the proven methods. Topwater poppers, like this one. These catch fish. They always have, and they always will. They are easy to find, they're easy to use, and they're fun all this to the side. Let me show you my other lure box. I've got some other lures in here. Really the only reason I keep these separate right now is because I just don't have enough room in one box. But this one's got a few more um, dividers in it. So the other one was kind of like a big catch-all. This one has got more dividers. So this is a nice one. It's designed to look like a little sunfish. It has a nice little swimming action to it. It looks extremely lifelike. Um, I've got different lures that I have found just on the beach, walking the beach or walking along, you know, lake sides. Haven't put any hooks on these, but I will get a chance to use those. I've got uh, my jig heads in here. So I've got my, uh, oh, what do you call these things? I don't remember what these are called. It doesn't matter. They catch fish. So I've got these in here. I've got my little panfish jig heads in here. So I like to catch little things like perch or crappie or those white bass on these. You know, I've got my slightly larger jig heads for trout and flounder and stuff like that. Uh, then I've got my like big weighted gamut katsu. These are the ones I like to use for bass and for redfish. You know, I've got some bass jigs in here. So like the ones that have the, the brush guard and have a little rattle inside of them. All kinds of stuff. You know, a few more rattle trap, topwater popper. You can see this is why you have the line guard. I mean the, uh, the hook guard on your lure so this doesn't happen. But yeah, little rattles in here. Top water popper, you, as you can see, stuff just gets tangled up. More of these soft plastic shrimp with the hooks in them. More bass jigs. These are wonderful because you can just cast these right into the middle of brush and jig them up and down for like long worms and stuff. Uh, they won't get tangled up. Really phenomenal stuff. So I've got my soft plastics, which Probably my favorite part of fishing with artificials is using soft plastics. So just one big bag with more bags inside of it. Got my uh, larger jig heads in here. Small jigs for crappie. I've got just, uh, you know, dumping mullet as it's called uh, for, you know, all kinds of like trout and flounder, stuff like that. You know, these small kind of generic green fish body jigs right here. Great for panfish, for crappie, for small bass. 
these right here, these uh, sand eels by Norton. These are fantastic. I've caught loads of fish on these. Trout love these. All kinds of fish in salt water will eat these. Uh, topwater frogs. So you, you have the, the weighted hook that you'll put through here. I actually think, let me show you the type of hook you would put through that. So the jig hooks that have the, the hefty weights on them. Some of them are single, some of them are double. Uh, that's the type of thing that you would run through the legs of these frogs. So here's the frog. The hook would run through, the weight would run under, and then the hooks come through up the top of the, or the bottom of the legs like this. So when you're, it kind of kicks like a frog when you're reeling it, and it can go through brush without getting snagged up. A really phenomenal lure. Love those. Um, I've got these little zoom soft plastics. Got, you know, shaped like lizards. You know, all things that bass love to eat. These are great bass lures, especially when you're fishing like very, very thick, brushy areas. I've got my worms here. I've got more of these Norton lures. This is just kind of a mixed bag of soft plastics. So I've got everything from, you know, shads, which one of my favorites. This is actually the smaller version of the soft plastic that I caught the alligator gar on that I had modified. It was a bigger version of this exact lure. You know, classic white body, red tail. My dad used to catch loads of trout on these. Um, then I've got, uh, these are my personal favorite ones right here, these kind of like speckled mullet designs. Love running jigs through these and then putting like a little flasher spoon on them. You've got the, the beetle rigs and then these curly tail jigs right here, just fantastic. So this is kind of my mixed bag if I want to ever experiment. And then I've also got some of these larger bass baits here. These are these are a little bit heftier. These would catch you some of your you know your larger trophy bass. And again, more more curly tail jigs. These work wonders for me. One my whole video uh, where I was catching bass on a new tackle, I think was the title of the video. That's that's all I was using pretty much. Just those curly tail jigs. Drop these back in here. Press to organize. It's like filming a video in a sauna in here. This shirt was dry when I put it on, guys. Let's see what else we got. What else we got? Waterproof camera case. Filming underwater. This thing costs $6 on Amazon. Works very well. Haven't been able to use it to its fullest capacity yet on the show because most of the water I fish is pretty murky. This is, no doubt, something you've seen before. I love this. So if you're a pocket freak like me and you like to be organized, this is the Tournament Choice uh, Worm Bag, I think they're called. Anyway, loads of these like categorization bags here. And this is what I keep all my hooks in. So I have loads and loads and loads. There you go, try to get this, block this from the overhead light. Loads of my hooks in here. Just everything that I fish with, all the hooks that I have, I keep them sorted in here and I have loads of different types of hooks. All sizes, all shapes, all purposes. Keep them nice and sorted away. I know exactly what order they're in. I know exactly where they're at. Some more artificial baits. And again, this is, I need to go through and clean this out. I thought I had lost these the other day. Here they are. I was so mad because I bought this lure. This is a pike lure, a little spinner of MEPS. It's a big MEPS. Uh, this is kind of what I was talking about when I said I like to put uh, a spoon on some of my jigs, catch loads of fish like this, and then like traditional traditional spinner baits, which I love. I thought I had lost all of these. That's where they were. They were in this pocket right here, guys. Gulps, some artificial baits, these little artificial worms. Great for panfish. Put those in there. So for filming, I've also got this uh, six foot extension cord so I can charge my battery while I'm filming so I don't you know run my battery down. And it's hooked up to this. This is an external battery and it is uh, well it was waterproof until i lost the cover and now it's not waterproof anymore but it's still extremely tough it's very durable has a phenomenal flashlight and this thing i mean this works incredibly well really nice it's got a little loop closure there for a lanyard if you want to wear it like that or hang it up from anything if you're working you can turn the flashlight on and then hang it up from that little loop closure to use as a kind of an overhead light Really, really handy. This is one of the nicest gifts I was ever given. My girlfriend got it 
for me a couple of years ago and I just use it constantly. Keep my weights in this bag so I've got, you know, egg sinkers. I've got loads of these uh, teardrop weights. I've got all kinds of, you know, different sized egg sinkers. These are the one ounce sinkers. I use these a lot when I'm catfishing. You know, I've got these uh, bullet weights here, whether I'm drop shotting. Here's a nice little drop shot weight right here. Drop shotting for bass or for panfish or for sheep's head. Or, you know, I want to add some weight to maybe like a Texas rig or something like that. You know, I can cast out a little bullet weight on it like that. Really, really nice. Or when I'm snagging, I'll tie the uh, I'll tie these down to the end of my line below the hook. So put my weights in here. That's about 90% of the weight for this backpack when I'm carrying it. Glow in the dark attachments for my floats. My floats, which I keep in this right here. So these are the types of floats I prefer to use. These very, very simple foam floats that have the plastic pegs on the end. And I love the ones that have the slots up the side. Can you see that? Yeah, there you see the, the slot right there up the side. Very important to me so I can take it on or off if I want. You know, if the fish aren't biting on the surface and I feel like the fish are biting down below on the bottom, I can take that float off real quick, throw it back out there, and we're good to go. Always carry a lighter with me. Oh, this lighter is out of order, y'all. Time for a new lighter, but I like to use this to swell up the ends of my fishing line to make my knots tighter for when I'm fishing for big game. Oh, here's another rogue lure. A little frog, a little worm jig here with a weighted head on it. Put those back in here. So this is kind of the average bag that I'll carry when I'm fishing for, you know, most species. I've got a pair of medical scissors with a lanyard that has a little uh, retrievable cord. So I can pull that out, it's going right back. It's a big pair of medical scissors. Use that to cut all my fishing line. I've got a nice pair of wire cutters here. Never leave home without those. I've got my hook disgorger that I just keep on the edge of the backpack right here through this little loop closure. And that is what I have with me 99.9% .9 of the time. However, when I'm going out for big game, sharks, big gar, you know, large red drum where I know I'm going to be sea fishing. I bring out bag number two. This is the big game tackle bag. So let's start right here. This is my shark and stingray leader bag. So hold that open. Let me show you what I've got in here. Some of my shark hooks in there, you can see they're quite large. Some 400 pound cable. I think this is like something like 500 pound monofilament uh, that I use for the, the length of my shark leaders running down to the hook. I always have a bit of electrician's tape in there. Let me show you some of the hooks that I have. These right here are the big bad ones. These are like 14 knot hooks, not all circle hooks by owner. You could stop a truck with those keep most of my shark leaders in this plastic container right here. And again, we'll do a whole whole video on how to do shark leaders, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but let me just show you some that I've made. I've got some that have straight hooks. I've got some that have circle hooks. This is a Nautilus hook by Gamut Katsu. This is 400 pound um, wire that's plastic coated. And then uh, like this is the other end of the leader here. So this is the leader in two parts. Here's the part with the hook. And here's one that's fully attached. So I've got the hook with the wire attached to maybe 25 feet of this uh, like 400 pound, 500 pound monofilament. You know, huge big game swivels on here. These are very strong. These are like 400 pound test swivels. This, this cotton thread, I'm not gonna tell you what that's for. You're gonna have to wait until you see my other video. So lots and lots of shark gear in here. Put all this to the side. Don't wanna lose any of that. You gotta, be, you gotta be careful when you're actually storing this stuff. I mean, if you just start throwing these shark leaders in there, what's gonna happen is the very sharp point to the hook on your, uh, your leader is gonna end up puncturing or scratching the monofilament end, and then you've compromised uh, you know, a, a leader that's supposed to maintain a very large fish. So I've got all kinds of line in here. This is 50 pound, uh, 50 pound Berkeley, yeah, Trilene. So 
That is something I'll use for backing for some of my big game reels. I've got a fighting belt, my crimping pliers. This is what I used to make most of my leaders with. Bigger pliers, these are also a larger set of wire cutters. This is also good for unhooking sharks like black tips. I've got a landing rope. If you watch the one where I caught the gar on a bass lure, you can see why I like to use that. My homemade shark weights. Again, I'll do another video on how to make these. The spare hooks. Some relatively large spare hooks. And then up here in this pocket, I've just got some odds and ends. Little things that you may not think about. Uh, I've got some eye wash. I do carry first aid supplies with me, some medical tape. But also I have a uh, fillet knife sharpener, and that goes with the fillet knife that I have, which will also double as a bait knife from time to time. You know, if my lighter ever goes out, which you just saw it did, fear not. I keep a package of mac a package of packages with me at all times. Package of matches. One of the bells for the fishing rods, uh, spare parts for the reel, uh, different tools to work on my reels. Put all that to the side. Sometimes I'll carry spare leaders like this. So this is a hefty surf fishing leader I've made for things like stingray or black tip sharks. Big circle hook, 170 pound wire, tied to you know 300 pound, 400 pound monofilament. I know I keep changing that number every time I say it. It's because I can't remember. You know, big spider weights. I'm a huge fan of using spider weights. This is the kind of stuff I like to pack around in my big game bag. Side pocket here, another thing you may not think about. Spare knife, I believe in packing lots of knives with me when I go fishing, uh, mostly just because you never know you're gonna be cutting all kinds of line, bait, you never know when you're gonna need one. This right here though is actually a shovel. Good friend, a uh, good friend named Paul Ortega, who I used to work with, gave me this. And this is it's like a little army style shovel. And uh, what I like to use it for is actually digging out the holes to put my, my rod holders in. So I've got these big long aluminum rod holders that are basically the poles from a volleyball net. And uh, instead of digging out with my hands, use a shovel. And this one is cool because it breaks down, it packs away, it folds up nicely. It's incredibly durable, it's incredibly small. This thing is just a fantastic piece of kit. It fits in this bag. You never even know it's there until you need it. Let me just put that away. Can't get it back in the bag. There we go. Let's put this back over here. You know, some other odds and ends that I might use. I've got some of my carp baits, like these are some of my pop-ups. Tiger nut boilies. PVA bags. Spare line, I always like to keep a little bit of spare line with me. Boily stops, uh, fish bites. If you if you fish saltwater, you don't leave home without these. Always like to have a good flashlight with me. You never know when you're going to need that. Stringer, in case you ever need one. You know, I've got the, uh, the fish grips, which is nice if you're ever fishing, especially if you're fishing off a boat and you don't have your net. Which, by the way, is a piece of kit that I absolutely would have shown you already had I not lost it. Uh, but uh, this is something that I would use for hard bony mouth fish that have teeth. So you'll never see me pick up a carp with one of these. Uh, but if I'm ever boat side and maybe it's something like a big trout, like a spotted trout or something like that, uh, you know, I don't want to lift it up by the line, you can use this right here. These are amazing. Put them over here, spare floats. This bag right here, you've got one for my, uh, for my hooks. I also like to use one for my leader materials. So I've got hooks in one, I've got all my wire and spare leader materials coiled up and organized in here. So these are, you know, several hundred pound test wire. You know, some of the leaders are pre-made, some of them are still on the plastic spool. I've got my big game swivels in here, so when I'm gonna make a leader for sharks, this is where I get my swivels from. Here are where all my crimps are. You know, this one right here, this is like a four times as strong, like a 4X circle hook right there. That is a stingray leader that I have started making. Loads of stuff. So. The more stuff you have organized and pre-made and ready to be used, the less time you're going to be trying to put stuff together when you could be fishing. Preparedness saves you so much time. Remember, you're only truly fishing when your bait is in the water. Having your stuff organized, knowing what's what and where it is, is going to help you. And then there's the small things that might be easy to overlook. So for example, a can opener. If you know me, I like to go fishing for carp. I use a lot of canned corn as bait. 
it is very dangerous to try to puncture the can with a knife, so carry a good can opener with you. Polarizing sunglasses. I don't wear these because they look cool. I wear these because it lets me see through the water in the sunlight. Um, sometimes it's also really hard to fish outside in the heat of the day with the sun in your face. So putting these on will help you spot fish, help you catch that fish. They make the difference. Loads of stuff that I like to use. Uh, I've got lots more stuff, not a lot of time though, so that's kind of the essentials of what I like to use. The lures I like, uh, the line that I like, you know, the the terminal tackle, the hooks that I like. I'll do I'll do some more information on hooks. You know, I like to stick with brands like Gamakatsu and Owner. Um, you know, carp hooks, again, same brands, Gamakatsu for all my carp hooks. You know, keep it simple. Don't get overwhelmed by the technical jargon. Buy stuff that works, buy stuff that's gonna be reliable, buy stuff that's gonna last you a long time, and you're gonna be good to go. Remember, this is me. I'm not endorsing any of this. I'm not saying because it works for me, it's gonna work for you, uh, but I've had an enormous amount of success with these things. This is what I like to use when I go fishing, and it's what I like to show you guys when I can't go fishing. <laughs>